Although the human body is equipped with a very complex defense system, sometimes there are situations in which it loses the battle with the very rapid evolutionary process taking place in the world of pathogens, such as bacteria or viruses. One example of such a danger with which our bodies can't cope very well is the Ebola virus. According to data provided by the World Health Organization, the current hemorrhagic fever outbreaks in West Africa caused by the Ebola virus have already killed nearly 7,000 people. The mortality rate can be very high, even reaching 90% in some areas. Only a fraction of people infected with the virus manage to survive. Based on the findings of recent scientific studies, we will try to answer the questions of what makes the Ebola virus so deadly and why our bodies have such difficulty in overcoming it. The immune system of a healthy person is able to deal very well with most of the pathogens trying to infect our bodies on a daily basis. When unwanted guests somehow manage to get through our first lines of defense, such as our skin's acidic sweat, gastric acid, and finally the antibacterial enzymes of the mucous membranes, then a whole army of leukocytes takes the helm. It's a very complex but also elegant mechanism of mutual cooperation between immune cells, which finally leads to the elimination of the danger. One of the key elements of this intercellular cooperation is a process in which substances called cytokines are discharged from cells. It's thanks to cytokines that the immune cells are able to communicate, alarm each other, and control the whole process of fighting unwanted guests. Interferons are among the many types of such cytokines. The immune cells of the healthy body release them in response to the presence of harmful pathogens. Thus, neighboring cells are warned about the coming threat and can begin to implement preventative measures. Apart from the ability to alarm other cells, interferons are also able to inhibit the process of viral replication within our cells and thereby help the immune system to gain some time to make the appropriate preparations for the battle against the virus. Moreover, they stimulate cells to increase their output of so-called MHC molecules, which serve to speed up the process through which other immune cells recognize the virus. Briefly speaking, there are many reasons why viruses have a right to hate interferons. Let's take a closer view on how exactly this looks when the activation of the antiviral defense begins. First, the interferon activates a protein, STAT1, which then binds to the KPNA5 group of amino acids, which is responsible for the transportation of the previously activated protein to the cell nucleus. In other words, the STAT1 protein needs a guide in order to get to the nucleus, and from there, initiate the antiviral defense. Under normal circumstances, the guiding KPNA5 protein is easily recognized by and bound to the STAT1 protein, enabling the correct signal to reach the cell nucleus. Now try to imagine a situation in which a rival suddenly shows up. It is so well designed by evolutionary processes that it is able to effectively compete with the STAT1 protein in binding with the KPNA5 transporter. It's not hard to guess that this unexpected competitor is the Ebola virus, more specifically one of its proteins called EVP24. Usually, in the competition between EVP24 and STAT1, the viral protein wins, so the signal being carried by the STAT1 protein about antiviral defense doesn't reach its destination. As a result, an infected cell loses its ability to react to the threat at an early stage of infection. What's more, although the EVP24 protein inhibits the antiviral and alarm signals, it doesn't affect the rest of the intercellular processes. This allows the virus to pursue its main goal of changing our cells into factories for its equally ignoble descendants. In most cases, the death of hemorrhagic fever victims is caused by a violent and uncontrolled immune reaction called a cytokine storm. Although the mechanisms responsible for this are not entirely understood, it seems likely that it is triggered by an exaggerated response to the highly pathogenic invaders. Consequently, in a kind of act of desperation, an infected body tries to rescue itself at any cost and launches an entire barrage of defenses, which in most cases is not only deadly to the virus, but paradoxically also to the body. Such an aggressive release of pro-inflammatory cytokines activates too many immune cells in a single place, which leads to greater inflammation. As a result, blood vessels become more permeable, 
and thus bleeding occurs. Furthermore, nitric oxide is produced, which dilutes the blood and makes the situation even worse. Usually, the direct cause of death is organ failure, which is the result of something similar to septic shock. According to virologist Christopher Bassler from Mount Sinai Hospital in New York, the Ebola virus is one of the viruses most likely to trigger the cytokine storm. In his opinion, our body's responses to Ebola are too strong and come too late. Although no effective treatment has been approved so far, it should be noted that intense scientific research is being conducted around the world. Many promising treatments have already been identified, including potential vaccines, which according to the World Health Organization should be ready by the end of 2015.